the big challenge we are facing and in will increasingly face in the 21st century is that now there is the technology to hack human beings and therefore also to increasingly manipulate their desires and emotions. Of course, throughout history, uh, kings and emperors and prophets and religions, they always tried to get inside people's minds, understand what's happening there and manipulate it. And we saw in history mass movements of manipulation, again, like the totalitarian movements of the 20th century, but ultimately it wasn't, um, it was inefficient, not only because we, they didn't have the technology that I discussed earlier to really follow everybody all the time. Also, the, the main obstacle was simply the lack of biological knowledge. We didn't, humans didn't understand human biology, the human brain well enough to really understand what's happening there. So in the end, humans remained like black boxes that even somebody like Stalin or Mao or Hitler couldn't really figure out what's happening there. And now it's not just the breakthrough in computer science, but it's the same time the breakthrough in the biological sciences that are opening up this black box. They are enabling to, again, hack human beings, understand what's happening inside, and therefore open completely new ways of manipulation. And once you have something like that, the ability to manipulate on scale the desires and emotions and feelings of millions of people, then simply having fast, faster iteration of feedback is not necessarily enough. And again, the, the full ability to hack human beings, it's still in the future. We are still not there yet. But even what's been happening in the last few years is alarming. The, really, you have all these you know, algorithms and, and apps and devices that what they are really about is, is hacking human beings. You have the smartest people in the world working on this problem of how to push our emotional buttons. Like you have the big corporation and they say, look, people are spending 30 minutes a day on our uh, app, on our device, on our platform. We want them to spend one hour. This is your mission for this year. And they, they, they take the smartest people in the world and give them this task, how to hijack people's attention and keep them on our platform. And these smartest people in the world discovered how to press our emotional buttons, the fear button, the hate button, the greed button. And this is the easiest way to grab people's attention. And looking to the future, again, I mean, the threat of a rising dictatorship, a new kind of dictatorship is a big one. But even if we avoid that, how to deal with the new tools for hacking the human brain, the human mind, that's the, the really big uh, uh, question. Again, because taking the example I, I began the, the, this interview with, if I think about myself when I was, say, 14, and this algorithm analyzes my behavior, just you say analyzes what, where my eyes go, like I walk down the beach, and the algorithm analyzes if I focus on uh, cute guys or cute girls, or it analyzes what, my, what happens to my eyes when I watch uh, videos or television or whatever. And it discovers that uh, I like boys more than girls. And it tells it to me. Or it uses it to manipulate me in, in some way. So, you know, if it's a bad manipulation, like Coca-Cola is using this knowledge to sell me something I don't need. They show me commercials with sexy guys, so I buy their product, and I don't know why, then they are using it against me. But the really big issue is, what if the algorithm isn't uh, malign? It's not working in the service of some corporation. And I don't know this about myself, but the algorithm knows it. There is kind of an imbalance here. And what happens then? 
Yes, uh, to this point, actually, there were two points, right? One is the lack of accountability. There was the Coca-Cola example, and one was the uh, value alignment, uh, which is uh, all watched over by machines of loving grace, uh, right? So uh, the, the first point is easier to address. Um, Taiwan, uh, in our previous presidential election, uh, managed to establish a norm uh, through a completely independent branch of the government called the control or the control branch uh, that makes the campaign donation and campaign expenses radically transparent, meaning the raw data is published for independent journalists to analyze. And they've been doing this because we, the civic uh, activists, have been petitioning this, even doing acts of civil disobedience uh, for that. And so when we really started doing that, um, back in the mayoral election in 2018, we discovered that there's a large chunk missing the social media advertisements, these were not reported as campaign donations, neither as expenses. And many of them maybe came from outside Taiwan, and we don't know. It really is an unaccountable black box. And we read, of course, about the reports about how some foreign powers interfered with some other countries' elections using hyper-precision targeting technology, exactly the kind that Yuval um, described, right? It predicts uh, in a micro-prediction way uh, what people's kind of hidden uh, fears and hopes are, and they cater to those fears and hopes. And just target this very tiny slice of people uh, trying to persuade them to not go to vote or to avoid certain kind of candidate or do some kind of emotional manipulation. And so we tell the, all the multinationals that, okay, look at our control yuan. This radical transparency is the Taiwanese norm. And you have two choices. You can either publish your real-time advertisement library just as our control yuan does in radical transparency so people engaging in such dark manipulations will be this discovered and shamed, or you can just simply not run political and social um, advertisement during our election session, your choice. And we did not pass a law for that. We basically just let them know there will be social sanctions uh, if you violate the control UN norm, the our election norm. And so Facebook decided to radically open their ads library uh, while Google and Twitter and so on just simply refused to run political advertisements during our election.